Our study on evil continues as we have already done three introductory. Last one we did was where evil first shows up. We're going to pick up into our headings now and today, adjective. And we've got 23 contents. And we have about seven pages of adjective. And this is a not a brief study and not a detailed study. We're not going to look into every time the word evil show, shows up in the Bible. And we may miss your favorite evil. And I apologize. But I am doing what I thought was best in this study. And I may miss some. And maybe some of you are like, well, big deal, well, you know, that verse. You know, do the best I can. These are to help Christians grow. And number one, we got the adjective. An adjective describes something or something. Describes something and something. Great editing. We are studying, and we are studying the Word of God and the action of evil. What is evil according to the Bible? And we've done much look into when we did uh, introductions and go back to our YouTube and SoundCloud. And you got to follow this study. You got to follow. The, uh, you got to follow this study. Every you can't say, "Well, I like this one. And I'm not going to do this one," because you're going to miss different points. I'm not going to. Every time we do this study, I'm not going to review everything we've done so far. And if you half hear and half get the messages, and then you'll be doing yourself injustice. And I'm not trying to promote, say, you know, you watch all my videos so I can, I'm not marking. So, under adjective, the first place we're going to look up is Genesis 37 20. In Genesis 37 20, the Bible says, Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dream and this is the story of joseph joseph has aggravated his brothers his brothers have see him coming the father has sent him and they're plotting like the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees plotted to kill Jesus, they're plotting to kill Joseph. And the evil here is it describes the action of an evil beast. Animals can be evil by their very nature. You know, you take something as simple as a puppy or a kitten, you think, oh, they're just so cute and they won't. But they are capable of evil. Animals are capable of being evil. Again, with Joseph, it, it's taken that they would, you know, they would kill their brother. And they would go home to their father and saying, Joseph, well, he was devoured by an animal. He was eaten by a lion. He was conquered by a bear. And he was slaughtered. He was taken innocently by such an animal. And the evil description of the animal would be, he took your son. That's evil. And because of that animal, though this is not the true story here, I mean, they're devising the plan, but it would be evil that if you lost a loved one to an animal. And it happens. And the evil would be killing of an innocent life, the man or, or another animal. Now I have Genesis 9 5. Genesis 9 5. The Bible says, And surely your blood of your lives will I require, talking to Noah and for the rest of the world, at the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man. In the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. 
You know, we have capital punishment law. We should have them, but the Bible has capital punishment laws for murderers. And God says, if a man slays another man, he's to shed his blood. And God said to Noah, that is true for the animal. Now, if a dog kills a human being, God also wants retribution, retribution of that animal's blood to be shed. And you, you say, well, it happens if it happens out in the, in the wild. And God will put upon that animal as he puts upon man, if a man is slain or murdered. And the instruction we get out of this evil is animal or animals that take innocent life. That's evil. The animal's not evil, but the actions of that animal is evil. And remember, evil is not sin, but evil can be sin. And evil can be the consequences of sin. And when we're talking about adjectives, we're talking about description. It is evil for an animal to take someone's life. Number two. Numbers 14. I don't know how far we're going to get in these studies. I don't know if I'm going to sit, because I can see a timer in front of me. I don't know if we're going to have a set timer or what or maybe when the lord just says hey that's enough or we'll keep going numbers 14 27 numbers 14 27 and you can pause the video if i'm going too quick and i'm sorry for that but how long shall i god i will and if you this is the first time coming to my study that prone i will tell you who the pronoun is. So you know, you're looking at your Bible and say, well, how long shall I, I don't see God. What's he saying? I'm explaining. How shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmurs against me? Notice murmuring against God is called evil. I've heard their murmurs of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. So number two, Number one, we saw animal. Number two, a group of people are or can be evil. And here's the evil congregation, the children of Israel. As a whole, we're evil in the sin of murmuring or complaining. And yes, murmuring and complaining are sins. And one and all are considered evil. You can have a group of Christians called the church. You can have a <coughs> you, <coughs> excuse me. You can have a husband and wife people. You can have a whole family. You can have a whole employership, <laughs> employees. You can have a whole group of businesses. And they could be it's the adjective of evil, a griping and complaining. Bet you never thought of that. Bet you never thought when, you, when you're sitting around and you're complaining and, and, and crying the blues and people are in green with you and some people are throwing gasoline into the fire, but you didn't realize that that little group of people you got, or how big a group of people you got, the result of the description of the Bible describes you as evil. Please don't mind the birds. And notice the description matches the fact is we looked at Genesis 37 20 at an evil beast that killed a human being. And the same word evil is used for a group of people who are 
Oh, I don't like this place. This place is just so right. You know that boss of ours, he's just so rotten. Just, oh, the pastor there, he's just so bad. This church and, and the group of people and, uh, you know, this. It's called evil. Now we have some verses here. Numbers 14, 27. How long shall I bear this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. 35, verse 35. And the Lord, uh, I, the Lord, has said, I will surely do it unto all the evil congregations. Okay, that's God speaking. That ain't a pastor. That's not a Sunday school. That is God Almighty. Psalms 26, 5. Psalms 26, 5. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. That's David speaking. You know what you to do when you find an evil congregation, according to David? You're to hate it. We were in a church one time, and my wife, Lisa, was active in the nursery duty. She liked it. She loved it. And she told me one time, there was just a group of women that just were just complaining. And at one point, she just, she told him, she said, I don't want to hear it, and shut up. And she came and asked me, did I do the right thing? I said, yeah. She hated it. And she went respectfully to the woman in charge of nursery. She said, I, I, I will do nursery, but I won't do it with those women anymore. Unless I really have to, you really need a fill-in, I'm not going to do it with them. I have my personal reasons, and if you really need to know, I'll tell you, but I don't, I don't want to do it with them. That's a proper attitude. And yet, don't we all complain? I do. Sorry to say, I complain. Whether an individual or a corporate body of people, congregation, it's a sin. And God acknowledged this sin. God spoke. Saved or lost. <laughs> what else are you going to say? It's wrong. It's a sin. You need to repent. Numbers 20 verse 5. Okay, move on, move on. Nothing perfect. Is there a right compa complaining? Is there a wrong complaining? I don't know. Maybe we just take our complaint to God and say, God, just listen to me for a moment. It may be a sin, but will you just hear me out <laughs> instead of taking it to others? Well, I think to him, we'll take it to the Lord in prayer. Numbers 20, verse 5. And wherefore have you made us to come out of Egypt, children of Israel, to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed. Or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates. Needs there any water to drink? So the description of this evil is an evil place. There are evil places in the world, according to the scriptures. Were the children of Israel complaining, or were they wrong? No, they were not wrong. And they're not complaining. Where are they? They are in the wilderness. What is a biblical evil place? Is it a sin? No, watch. A biblical evil place cannot produce produce. There is no such life of vegetation and or possibly animals of any use to man. 
This is not a place to farm or maintain livestock. This is evil because there is no life worth living in this place. I've never been to a desert, but in the middle of a harsh desert, it's an evil place. There's nothing there where a man or animal could survive. Now, is it wrong? Is it sin? No, it's an adjective. There are places on this planet today because of man, it's an evil place. What? Because of what man has done in that land, pollution, nuclear. Things that man has done to the environment of that land uh, and it cannot produce anything worthy of anything to help man. It is evil not in the sense of sinning. It's an evil in the sense it's no use and value of a man. If you like me saying, okay, the next ice, big, huge iceberg that is floating in the Atlantic Ocean, well, let's go live on it. It's an evil place. Well, it may provide us water, cold water, but it has no life. You know why a place called hell is evil? Because there's no maintaining of life there. But though you're going to be living for all eternity in hell, but there's no life, there's no water, there's no vegetation. In New Jerusalem, there's a river. There are trees of life. Think about that. By the description we read in Numbers 20, verse 5, New Jerusalem cannot be an evil place. It has trees. It has water. It sustains the life of souls. Now, hell has a sustain of life and souls, but there's no water. That man said, oh, if I could just have a drop of water. And there's no vegetation. Deserts and ice-covered lands are examples of an evil place. may be beautiful. It may be gorgeous. And not of wickedness, but just no bearing of life. There is one part of the world where nothing thrives. However, the... Atacama, A-T-A-C-A-M-A, -A -A, desert in Chile. The principal reason is the lack of water. Some parts of this region have not seen rain for decades. The acidic soil and high altitude leading to relatively high levels of ultraviolet radiation don't help this either. So this area has a water, I mean, this area has no water. There is no rain. And the altitude causes a, a toxin, and this would be an example of many examples in the world. It's an evil place. An evil describing an animal that would take a life. An evil that would take a group of people rebelling against God and his word. And a place that supports no life to mankind to live in that particular reason, region. So we are already seeing in two of three, the evidence of lack of life is evil. When God made this earth in Genesis 1, he put life on it. Animals, crabs, whales, birds, worms. And then he made a man out of the earth. And he said to the man, dress this area, take care of this area. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a help me to help you do that. I think it's Jeremiah says he did not, or Isaiah, he did not create this world in vain to be uninhabited. 
You know why these areas are evil areas? Because of sin and the curse placed upon man. I believe if Adam and Eve never sinned and can't put this world would be populated, this world would be a, a garden throughout the whole world of the descendants of Abraham and Isaac. Uh, Abraham, Abraham, I'm thinking of Israel, of, a, of Adam and Eve. So you simple say you have as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But because of the curse placed upon Adam and weeds and thorns and thistles, there are places where Adam and his family can't live. That's evil. Because I don't think God ever tended that. The moon, the Mars, the Saturn, the Astra are evil. Why? They're uh, places of no habitation for man. Number four. Deuteronomy 1. And we'll be coming back to these books again when we do the other topics. The headings. But right now, as, as far as adjective, describing, Deuteronomy 135. Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see the good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. All right? So we've had evil beast animals evil congregation we have an evil land we have an evil con congregation we have an evil generation a generation of children of israel that complained that was number two we, we looked at murmured and outright disobeyed god and his miracles and signs these are the ones that saw all the great wonders in Egypt. These are the ones that saw the, the Red Sea open up. And people have told me, if you show me God, I will. Die. No, Israel saw God and there were people that did not. Plain and simple. From the living years of the children of Israel that sinned against God. And any nation that sins against God. The same that will not trust in God of the Bible. Lays in an evil generation. The evil is rebelling against God. And let me tell you. If the Lord tarries. And I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. But if the rapture is to tarry. The generations of America. Are going to get eviler and eviler and evil is and evil extreme until the rapture happens. The state of America and England, generations have passed, lost and saved men that respected God, the church, and the Bible, the present age and the era and the future do not. There was a time in America and in England, though they didn't go to church, though they were not saved, they respected God and his word. Man did not commit an adultery. Matter of fact, there were crimes against adultery. I was watching, uh, uh, I watched the old television program. I was watching uh, oh, uh, Dragnet. Very good, pro very good program to watch. And they told a, a, a man that you have committed adultery and you are worthy to go to prison. And that was before the time I was born, 1968. Those programs were before I was born. There would be people that would respect and when I say clergy, I mean anybody who was the head of a, any church, any church. They were respected. There would have been great fear to and honor and respect to a family that served the Lord. There would have been great honor and respect to police that are not today. There was great honor and respect to the elderly people, which is not today. 
and we're getting worse and worse. The age or era of the modern world world is getting more and to the worse evil than it has ever been. And the Bible speaks about of the church age. Men will be lovers of themselves and they're reaching out to get men to tickle their ears. Evolution is wrong. Things are not getting better. We have an evil generation of ages and ages, which is different from a congregation. A congregation is a group of people. A generation is an age of people. An evil respective here is unlike an evil congregation. The generation is an age or error group of people rebelling against God and his word. We have that. Is the generation sin? No. There are people in this generation, such as I, they're born again, they're saved, they love the Lord, they serve the Lord, they do all they can. That's not. And then there are people who are wicked and vile. Number five, Deuteronomy 7.15. And I wish we could do all this, but there's just so much, and I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. I want this to get all, all out. Deuteronomy 7.15. And the Lord will take away from thee, Israel, all sickness. I'm not going to get into the doctrine, but he's talking to the children of Israel. And will put none of these evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, Israel, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee, thee, Israel. I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop there. But let me. So what we have, we have an evil disease. What would be an evil disease today before we get into looking? Cancer. Now, is cancer a sin? No. Cancer may be the result, the evil of sin. Say, Sally, I, I haven't got to your introduction to know that. Well, what are you talking about? Smoking cigarettes or tobacco products is a sin. You need to get the introduction. You need to get the first place evil shows up. That's, I talk about that. Smoking cigarettes or tobacco products or chewing tobacco products is a sin. What's the evil? The doctor tells you you got emphysema. Emphysema is not sin. It is the consequence of sin. Evil can be sin, but evil can be consequence of sin. Going out, getting drunk, and drinking and driving is a sin. And the police officer that is sitting in your hospital room, the next morning that you come out of your fit, the evil would be you killed a family on the highway. Killing a family, is that a sin? Yes. That's murder. What's the consequences of getting drunk and driving? You killed an innocent family. Their evil is a consequence of someone's drinking, and it is also a sin of murder. This is why we're this is why I set forth to study the word evil. Because the Bible says God says I create evil, and we talked about that in their introduction. Does God sin? Never. Well, then how does God create evil? This is why we're doing this study. This is why you need to go back and get the introductions, both one and two, in the first place, evil shows up. 
Cancer is a evil, but it's not sin. And it can be as a cause because you smoked, because you drank, because the place you worked. I know of people, and this is going to be very hard to explain, but they have a cancer, getting a cancer, and it's not their sin. It is because of history's past, what was done to the land and the water. Where I come from in Connecticut, there were textile factories and mills. And before the EPA, they would just dump their pollutants. Factories of all kinds throughout the world would just dump their pollutants out into the land or into the waters. As a result of the pollution, the soil soaked up the chemicals, the harmful, and people today get cancer because of them pollutants, because of the pollutions, is one of the causes. And the person that goes to the doctor says, you got whatever cancer. They may not have sinned. But they've got an evil called cancer. You may get a sexually transmitted disease when you were born because of the, the foolishness of your mother or your father or both. You didn't sin, but you ended up with a, with a disease. You ended up with a evil of an STD. And the evil may not have been your fault. Why it's evil. So when we look at Deuteronomy 7.15, evil diseases and more evil diseases. The target of the land of Egypt from God. The blood. The water turned into blood. They couldn't drink of the river. The frogs violated everything. The lice, the gnats, the flies, the death of the livestock, the boils, the fire, the hail, the locusts, the darkness, the death of the firstborn. So we will study in this study, Lord willing, Evil as suffering. People are suffering it is not because of sin. People suffer because of sin. There's pain. That is evil. Pain is not good. But then again, pain is good. You say, Stanley, come on. You're messing me up. How can, how can pain be good and how can pain be evil? All right, you're eating something, all of a sudden you're, ah, two, oh, boy. Wow, oh, that hurts. What happened? And you go to the dentist and you sit in his chair. He says, oh, okay, the reason why you got the pain is you got a cavity and we'll fix it. Now, is, is that pain evil? No, it's good because it's, hey, you got a problem. Uh, doc, I. I my arm hurts. I just don't feel well. And you go to the doctor and he gives you tests. Is that pain and evil? That, that doesn't feel well. Is it evil? No. All right. We, we got to correct these because you're on the verge of a stroke. You are on the verge of a heart attack. If you keep on going the way you're going. Is that evil? No. It's a warning. It's good. Man, you, you're hiking on a trail and you fall down you get up and your leg I hope my leg ah you just sprained your foot or you just broke a bone that pain is saying good because there's something wrong with me that's what pain is that's what God intended pain in our body as one means there's something wrong with you 
I've had now over two months. I got a pain in my ear. What's the problem? I've got an ear infection. Now I can't tell you with the, with the pain of, with the pain in my ear. I mean, is it evil? Is it something I've done wrong? I, I don't know why. Probably allergies. So it wouldn't be an evil. But it would be an evil as the consequences of allergies. All right. You go up to a man and he has no arm. And did you lose it in, in a war or an accident? Or No. You see, I got drunk one night and foolishly I was playing with a knife and I, I cut my arm off. Now, the loss of that limb is evil because you were you got drunk. And you stupidly cut off your arm. It ain't coming back. When a person is amputated because of diabetes, the amputation of whatever part of that body is not evil unless the diabetic won't take care of his diabetes and will not do what the doctor tells him to do. And he just keeps on eating. He doesn't care. Then the amputation becomes evil. Now, if the person takes care of his diabetes, to, let's say you got a diabetic such as I am, but you know he takes care and he's got his numbers right all the time, and he doesn't even take. The doctor told me he says, you know, you can have one day of just elaborating yourself with sugar. He told me that. Just say this guy doesn't. And he still has the amputation. That's not. That's an evil disease of diabetes, but that's not because he didn't. He sinned. You can have diabetes and not sin. And you can have diabetes and a sinner because you're a glutton. You see why evil is such an important study. And then we could have death. <laughs> And that's just too, I mean, you can die, just die, and you can die because of sin. You can die a foolish death of sin with famous last word. Hey, watch me do this. Famous foolish last words. One more time. Evil is an adjective of a description. Deuteronomy 7 5. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. That's not what I wanted to read. 7 15, excuse me. We, we just read 7 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt. Which thou knowest. You know. You've seen it. Psalm 41.8. Psalm 41.8. Psalm 41.8. You can't say. When you get that illness. That disease. From the diagnosis from the doctor. God done it to me. Why did God kill all the babies? God then may not have done it. And then you can't be so quick to devil. Why did the devil do it? Why did the devil make me do it? It may be you. An evil disease can be from God. It can be from the devil. It can be from you. Or it can be because of another man. Or animal. Rabies. You don't have to be bit by an animal to get rabies. We had one time we were living and we had a, uh, the cops had to shoot a rabid animal on our property. It happened to be on our, our, our stairs. And when the animal control officer came and, you know, looked at, did what they had to do, he came to us and he said, you got to clean that step with bleach. And you, you go get two bottles of bleach and you just pour it on there. 
And I think like two hours after that, you get some more bleach poured on it, and then you wipe it off, and then you pour bleach on it again. And they said it was going to rain in a couple of days, and that rain would wash it away. And me, I asked questions all the time. I said, well, why is that, officer? Because of the saliva and then the blood of that animal, the fluids of that animal. And had he not died, uh, let's say he came over, slabitated on the stairs, and then went off in the woods. You can get rabies from the saliva and from the body fluids. And then rabies would be an evil disease. Well, it wouldn't been, I, I wouldn't even, would not even known that the animal was there. Psalms 41.8. Forty-one eight. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. That was, that caused death. An evil disease attacked both my wives, called cancer. One wife with breast cancer. We don't know why, doctors. And she died very young. My second wife, lung cancer. I told her, quit smoking. I prayed about her smoking. That's all I'm going to say about that. But there it is. And Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 2. A man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor. So that he wanteth nothing for his soul. Of all that he desires, yet God giveth him not the power to eat thereof. But a, strange, but a stranger eateth. This is vanity, nothing, emptieth. It's an evil disease. There have been, I read stories, and I've heard stories, of rich men. And because of digestion, because of illnesses, because of whatever has happened to whatever, my grandpa for a while was a man not a, a, a material well. I mean, he well, God loved him. He loved God. He had a great family, wonderful. And for a while there, he had a feeding tube, and we had to put a liquid diet into that while we would sit at the table and have hamburgers, pork, and whatever grandma made. There are people who are rich in this world. I mean, in, they're, they're in the world. I don't mean they're rich in the world. because It could be rich in the world, or there could be Christians. In, and the means of their food that they're getting today is coming in the form of an IV bottle. I've had that happen to me. I have been so sick I couldn't get food and they had to feed me with nutrients through IV bottle. And Solomon, the, the wisest man of God, said, that's evil. That's a disease is evil. Today's society, an evil disease would be in any form of cancer. But in ages past, and though they may come back, evil diseases were forms of black death, polio, and other destroying and deadly diseases. In realms of Africa, you can get a, a, a disease from insects. In some cases, you will not die, but it will mess your body up for life. 
It was neither God, it was neither the devil, it was neither you, it was neither no other man but an evil beast. We go back to number one. It may be of God because the evil would be the consequences of you sinning. Or it may be evil of the devil, according to Job 1 and 2, because Job was doing right. It could be an evil consequences because you have sinned. It could be an evil consequences because other men have polluted or destroyed. And when we look into the realm of evil, if you don't get the whole study, you're going to listen to one and say, Stalin is contradicting himself. I got it. The Bible's contradiction by Stalin and his study of evil. And God will tell you you're wrong. And God will tell you, he told you get all the messages. This is why I am doing the study. Maybe I shouldn't be doing it. Maybe I am setting forth somebody to contradict the Bible. But I'm putting that warning out there. Don't. Get it all. Get it all. It's the word of God. It's wonderful and great. 